So you're ready to jump into the incredible world of flight simulation with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. As of December 2022, when I'm recording this, there are two ways to enjoy this incredible simulator, with an Xbox Series S or Series X, or on the conventional PC. Which one is better? Let's talk about it. Perhaps you're an avid PC gamer, or maybe you've been using consoles for years, and you're left with the question, which one is better for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020? In this video, I'm gonna share my experience starting out with an Xbox Series X and then moving to a PC. To compare the Series X console with the PC, we're gonna be looking at footage captured on each of some of my favorite places to fly, some of the discovery flights, some of the different menu options, as well as some of the different controller options. But first, let's talk about the hardware. We have a Microsoft Xbox Series X console. On the PC side, I'm using a Dell XPS 8950. Yes, it's not even a gaming computer, but it is a very powerful computer. I will put the specs here so you can pause if you want to take a look at those. The Xbox Series X retails for $499 US dollars, and this PC cost me right around $3,000 on sale. Yes, there is a very big difference in the price, and we will talk about that later. The footage from the Xbox was recorded externally on a USB drive, and from the PC was recorded through NVIDIA Shadow Play, which uses the graphics card. All footage was recorded at a 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. However, it is important to note that due to variations in the frame rate, what you are seeing and what I am seeing on the screen may not be entirely the same. At the time of recording, both the Xbox and the PC, including Microsoft Flight Simulator itself, had all of the latest updates installed, this was a few weeks after Sim Update 11 was released for both PC and Xbox. All freeware add-ons were installed with the addition of some paid add-ons through the marketplace and a few free add-ons from flightsim.to, which I will discuss when we are viewing those areas. The controller that I have been using since I purchased the Xbox is the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTAS 1, which I have been very happy with, with the one issue being the throttle when I first purchased it, the throttle was very loose. It did not have a lot of resistance to it. So like I do with everything, I took it apart and made some modifications to the springs to increase the tension and also cut down the detent at 50% throttle. If you are interested in seeing that, if I do make a video, I will put a link to that right here. This controller is compatible with both the Xbox and the PC. So if you are thinking about transitioning from one platform to the other, do keep that in mind when you are making a selection to purchase. Not all of them are compatible on both platforms. In this case, this one was, so it was very easy to transition to the PC from the Xbox. Before we compare the footage, let's take a look at the different graphics settings options in the PC versus the Xbox. First, we'll take a look at the PC. I do want to note that while running on the PC, I am using NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution under the quality setting. This actually renders the game at 1440 and then upscales it to 4K, similar to what the Xbox does. Most of the options are set at ultra with the exception of a few that are set to high and medium and with those I did not see much of a change in the graphic quality. Currently, there are very few computers that are really capable of running this simulator to its full potential. All of these options on the PC allow you to really tailor the experience to you. For myself, I enjoy the beautiful scenery and I want it to be as detailed as possible while some may be limited by their computer and have to turn down certain settings to get a smoother experience. Again, all of these are going to be limited by the computer you're using. Looking at the graphics options on the Xbox, you can see there's only one, HDR10 on or HDR10 off. I believe that Asobo locked the graphics settings to ensure a smooth user experience given the massive amount of power needed to render the simulator. And I will say they did a good job because it is very smooth in most places. Before we get into the comparison, Feel free to click any of the chapters for any specific parts you want to see, as this is a long video. Now let's get into the comparison. The first place we're going to take a look at is New York City, which is a very popular place to fly in the simulator. New York City has an incredible amount of buildings, which makes it extremely hard to render when you're flying around. We have the PC on the left, noted with the PC on the top, and the Xbox on the right, with the Xbox on the top. Right now we are flying up the Hudson River, panning back and forth looking at Manhattan and Brooklyn. You can notice on the Xbox when you're panning side to side that a lot of the scenery needs to reload despite having the rolling cache on. You can also note the difference in the detail of the buildings, the grass, the textures. 
On the PC side, you're going to see a lot more textures that really make the visuals appear more realistic in my opinion. Looking at some of the smaller buildings, they're much more detailed on the PC compared to the Xbox, while many of the larger, more distinguishable buildings do look very comparable on each. Looking back at Manhattan, you can see that many of the buildings look similar when you're further away, but as you get closer, you will note increased detail on the PC. And again, when you look out far away, you can see the draw distance on the PC is much better. As we get closer to the buildings, you can see aliasing occurring on both the PC and the Xbox. And this is quite common in some of the buildings. It doesn't happen in all of them, but some of them do appear to have some aliasing. As you get closer, you can see some small stutters. And again, like I said, we are flying low in between the buildings in New York City. This is probably one of the hardest areas for the simulator to render. So we're going to have lower frame rates on the PC. I do have the VRR or variable refresh rate option turned on on the Xbox, which using the monitor I'm using would allow the frames to reach over the 30 frame per second that it's normally locked at using a 60 hertz panel. But again, given where we're flying, the frame rates are probably close to 30 on the Xbox as well. If you look sideways as you're flying by some objects close, you can see some small stutters. But again, this is a simulator, so you don't necessarily need super high frame rates to get a smooth experience as long as the frames are rendering smoothly. Moving on to the Statue of Liberty, we can see that the colors on the PC are seeming to be a little more accurate compared to the Xbox. The Xbox does seem to be a little more saturated. I will note that I do have the wind turned down all the way. That's why all the water looks completely flat. Now we're moving on to my hometown of Buffalo, New York. We're taking off at the Buffalo International Airport. And one thing I would like to point out is that you can see on the PC version, the airport looks just like the Buffalo Airport does. Whereas on the Xbox, it doesn't really accurately represent the airport. I was able to download some freeware from flightsim.to and get a more accurate representation of the airport. If you live in a smaller city that doesn't have photogrammetry done for your area, it may be something that you want to look into so you can have a more homey experience while you're flying. As we fly towards downtown Buffalo, you can clearly see the skyline and the buildings on the PC version, whereas on the Xbox, there's no real detail of the skyline. This really makes it feel more realistic. As we fly closer to downtown Buffalo, you can see the Peace Bridge on the right, and you can start to see some of the buildings on the left. I also downloaded upgraded scenery from flightsim.to that gives much more of an accurate representation of the buildings and cityscape. On the Xbox, you can see that not all the buildings are there, especially the one that sets the Buffalo skyline apart, which is the Seneca One Tower, which is a 38 story or 529 foot tall building. For those that live in Buffalo, this is the building you think of when you think of the Buffalo skyline. Looking over here on the PC side, you can see Buffalo City Hall, which was built in 1931 and at the time was one of the tallest buildings in the country. As we move a little further towards the lake, you can see the Seneca One Tower and you can also note the Key Bank Center, which is home of the Buffalo Sabres. And on the PC version, it is a 3D rendering, although the textures are not perfect. It's very nice to see a 3D building as opposed to the flat pancake we see on the Xbox. As we look back at the Buffalo skyline, we can see on the PC version, we have a much more accurate skyline, although the colors on many of the buildings are not accurate. And fun fact, right down here is where I fly my RC planes. Over on the Xbox, you can see some water and the water clarity and detail does look very good here. Flying just south of the city to Orchard Park, New York, you can see Highmark Stadium, which is the home of the 2022 Super Bowl champions, the Buffalo Bills. Shout out to all the Bills Mafia out there. Leave a comment. You can see I downloaded an upgraded rendering from flightsim.to of the stadium, and it looks awesome compared to the flat pancake on the Xbox. Now we're going to switch it back up and head back to New York City, flying over it at night. One of the things you can note is the detail on the PC version. Some of the lights look a little more defined compared to the Xbox. We still do have some differences in the draw distance when you're panning side to side. A lot of the scenery does have to reload on the Xbox compared to the PC. Looking back south at Manhattan, uh, it's pretty comparable here, I would say. But as we look back north, you can see a lot of the lights need extra time to load on the Xbox. 
And when you're sitting in the cockpit, just looking forward, you really don't have to wait for the scenery to load. But if you are outside of the plane looking around, which I often do, it is a little bit of a hindrance to have to wait for that scenery to load again and again, even with the rolling cache on. Looking east at New Jersey on the Xbox, you can see that there is quite a bit of detail and the draw distance is pretty good here. Now going back to the PC, flying south towards Manhattan, you can see when you pan side to side that all the scenery is there and there's no weight on that to load. Looking down, even staring directly into the sun, you can really see how much detail they were able to capture. And it really is quite amazing what they were able to do with this simulator. I'm shocked every time I fly through here. Time to take a look at one of the Discovery flights. We're going to start out at the Gold Coast in Australia. In my opinion, this is one of the most detailed areas to fly. Looking at the PC version, I feel that the colors are a little more accurate. Again, I feel like they're a little oversaturated on the Xbox. Over in this area with the waterways, the detail in all these houses is incredible. I do think that the buildings looked better before Sim Update 11. That could just be me, but in my experience, I remember them looking a little better than they do in here on both the Xbox and the PC. I will note again that I have a custom weather preset turned on right now that has no wind and that's why the water looks completely flat. As we fly over these waterways here, this really captures the detail that the simulator is able to provide. It looks great on both the PC and the Xbox, but you can just see more clarity, detail, and better textures on the PC version. They both look great, but the variations in the textures of the ground, the grasses, the trees look a little better on the PC in my opinion. Looking back at the buildings, I definitely feel like there was a decrease in quality from the last update, which would be Sim Update 10. Moving over to just the PC, flying around at a lower altitude. We are getting about 50 to 60 frames per second, but we're still getting a really smooth experience. Once you start getting down to 30 or 40 frames per second, which would indicate that the simulator is having a difficult time rendering those frames, you may get some stutters, you may have not the smoothest experience, but anything up here, 45 and above, gives you a really smooth experience. And this area here really shows what this simulator was able to capture. They really did a great job with the level of detail that was captured in this area. As we move closer to the buildings, you can see that the quality, the textures, the colors are just not quite as good as I remember them being. But let me know if you remember them being a little better in the last update as well. Let's move on to our next Discovery flight, London, England. I did pick many of these Discovery flights just because everything should be exactly the same. You can see the clouds are the exact same. And I will say on many occasions, I think the clouds on the Xbox look better than the PC. The clouds on the PC seem to have a bit of aliasing going on at some points. Looking at the buildings here, we can see increased detail textures on the PC version, whereas the Xbox is a little bit blurry. Looking at the London Bridge, I still think it looks much better on the PC. Better clarity, better textures. Looking at the buildings, they look good on both, but again, more clarity on the PC. The one thing I don't like about both the PC and the Xbox and the simulator in general is that the buildings that they've spent time modeling just look so different from the rest of the buildings. But I guess I'm being nitpicky. Eventually, maybe they'll have all of the buildings with better modeling. But you can see here the building on the left. It just stands out so much from the rest of the buildings. I guess I shouldn't complain about improvements, but it just looks so different from one building to the other. As we fly over to the London Eye, you can again see that there's just increased detail on the PC compared to the Xbox. The clarity of the water and the detail of the waves is a little more noticeable on the PC as well. Our next discovery flight is going to be Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And this is a sunset flight. It's beautiful. Maybe it's a sunrise, I'm not sure. We can see the differences in the colors here with the saturation on the PC compared to the Xbox. The Xbox again does look a little more saturated, which I in fact love when I'm flying around at sunrises or sunset. We can see the reflection quality on the PC version does seem to be a little more crisp. Looking over at the cliffs here, again we can see the detail on the PC version is a little better compared to the Xbox. 
the clouds on the Xbox, I think I actually like better here. I like them to look almost oversaturated when I'm flying around during a sunrise or sunset. It's just so beautiful. Again, you can see the reflections and the lighting on the plane on the PC it does look a little more crisp. Looking over at the Bay Area down here, you can see both have pretty good detail, but again, the PC is just a little more detailed. Despite having HDR10 enabled on the Xbox, the dynamic range on the PC does look a little better in situations like this, where you have the bright sun and dark shadows. This has recently become one of my favorite places to fly. These are the Appalachian Mountains, which stretch through many states, including Virginia, West Virginia, and North Carolina. I recently drove down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina from Buffalo this past summer with my girlfriend to visit her parents, and we took a route that was similar to where I am flying now through the mountains, and it was so incredible that I mapped out the route that we took on my phone and flew the same route. Looking out to the left on the PC, you can see really good draw distance and detail. On the Xbox, it's not quite as good. Looking down at the ground, you can see the textures on the PC are incredible in this area. The variations in color and textures in the trees and in the grasses and fields are really incredible. This whole area that stretches through these states is just beautiful. Over on the Xbox side, you can see that we are about to encounter some clouds. And again, the clouds on the Xbox do look very, very smooth. Very little aliasing on any of the clouds that I've noticed when flying on the Xbox. However, on the PC, the clouds look good, but you do see some aliasing on the edges and in the middle of the clouds from time to time. As we move closer to the mountain, you can really see the difference in the clarity and the textures of the trees. From what I understand, the clouds are some of the hardest graphics in the simulator to render accurately and make look realistic, but I think they do a very good job on both the PC and the Xbox. As we get closer to the mountain peak here, you can see the differences in the trees. On the PC side, it almost looks like a photograph. It really is incredible what they were able to do. I've seen many screenshots that people have taken from the flight simulator that the average person would not be able to distinguish this simulator from an actual photo. Over on the Xbox side, we can see looking out here, going through the clouds that are real thin, it looks very realistic. Going through clouds like that on the PC version doesn't always look quite as good. You can see some cliffs here on the PC version that don't have very good quality, but I believe that is given to the fact that they're almost vertical as opposed to horizontal. So the satellites are not able to get very accurate imaging of those. Overall, this area looks incredible on both platforms, the Xbox and the PC. Our last discovery flight is going to be Naples, Italy, and this one is beautiful. As you can see, flying on the Xbox and the PC in this area is incredible. Note on the PC side that the water looks a little better on the PC with increased clarity. Moving over this island here, which is the inlet of Nisidia, you can see that the lines on the buildings, the textures of the grasses and dirt do look a little better again on the PC. On the Xbox, you can see a bunch of what should be boats here look more like shipwrecks. As we move closer to these cliffs here, you can see increased detail on the PC. And again, looking at the field here up on top of the cliffs, you can see increased detail as well, improved textures on the grasses. Looking at all of these buildings and houses on the PC, they do look very detailed. Not quite as much on the Xbox, but it is a very crowded area. Overall, I do think the detail is much better here on the PC and overall in this whole area. Flying around Naples on the PC, my frame rates were between 50 and 60, which still does give a very smooth experience. Looking out in the distance, you can see the draw distance again is better on the PC. However, any of the buildings out that far are really indistinguishable. When we do zoom in and look at what we are passing by closely, you can definitely see improved clarity and textures on the PC compared to the Xbox. This is a very comparable view right here, looking over the left of the plane. We are a little bit closer on the Xbox, but you can again see that there's just a little better overall quality to the picture. To me, it looks more realistic on the PC. Again, the colors on the Xbox are just not quite as good as the PC in my opinion. 
This is the last clip that I would like to show for my comparison before I wrap up with my final thoughts. This is flying the F-18, and while the scenery looks beautiful, you can notice a bit of aliasing on the edges of the clouds and some odd textures in the clouds themselves. You can also notice some banding, if that's what you want to call it. I'm not sure if there's a specific term for it, but you can see this and it looks very, very odd. I've seen this on the Xbox and I've seen this on the PC, but it just goes to show that there is no perfect platform. Everything is going to have some pros and cons and nothing is perfect, especially running this simulator, which is extremely hard to run. Now that we've got through all the comparisons, it's time to discuss my final thoughts. Which is better, the Xbox or PC? Well, that depends. I think it's very clear to see that as far as a visual experience, the PC far outperforms the Xbox, but that depends on your PC. Do you have a budget PC or have you spent thousands of dollars on one of the highest performing PCs? That's what is really going to set it apart. You could spend about the same money on a PC that you could on an Xbox and the Xbox will far outperform the PC at that price range. This PC costs around $3,000 and that was on sale. Normally it would retail for close to $4,000. The Xbox is $499. If you're talking about strictly price to performance, there's no comparison. The PC that I am using costs six times what an Xbox does. Does it perform six times better? Absolutely not. It's hard to put an objective number on how much better it is. I think it's more of a subjective opinion. For me, I really want to see beautiful, smooth visuals, and I'm able to get that with a PC. I am also the kind of person that likes to tinker with things. So I enjoy adjusting the settings depending on where I'm flying, trying to maximize the performance. The PC allows you more options to expand. There are many more flight controllers that are compatible with the PC compared to the Xbox and also the addition of virtual reality headsets, which can also be hooked up to the PC, and those do look incredible. Additionally, the PC allows you to upgrade specific components in the future when new upgrades are available. As I stated previously, there is currently no computer that can easily run this simulator. Even with the 40 series NVIDIA GPUs that were just released, with the addition of DLSS 3 and frame generation, they still leave some wanting more. So if you want to try flight simulation and you have neither an Xbox or a PC, I would suggest starting with an Xbox Series X. It's much less expensive and it's much easier to use. There's no settings that you have to manage based on the performance of your system. If you enjoy it and you want more, then perhaps sell it and get a PC. That's exactly what I did. If you have any questions regarding any of my setup or any of the things I spoke about in the video, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, as this video did take a very long time to produce, or consider subscribing for more content like this. As always, thank you for watching, and fly safe.